Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva. and I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Professor Tim Unwin, who is UNESCO Chairman in ICT for Development, Royal Holloway, University of London, and also former Secretary General of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization. Tim, great to see you in the studio today. It's always nice to be here and uh, a pleasure to be with you again. Thanks very much indeed. Now, this year we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the IT development sector. The ICT landscape, I think you would agree, has changed tremendously in the past decades. ITU is launching a study on ICT for SDGs. And I wanted to ask you, how do you think this study will contribute to responding uh, to many of today's challenges? First, let me congratulate the ITU on this great event. I mean, 25 years, and as you say, the world has changed hugely, and ICTs have been a fundamental part of that. There are those, uh, yeah, not too many people, but there are those who, who actually see ICTs as being very unsustainable and doing a lot of damage in the world, leading to greater inequality, um, leading to you know, higher demands for energy and satellites in space. So uh, this uh, groundbreaking work by the people in the ITU, and, and they brought together a, a range of primarily economists, uh, is going to try and write about these issues in a slightly different way from the normal uh, arguments that tend to be put out there. So it's going to be uh, I hope, uh, a little bit critical, a little bit you know, actually asking, well, why haven't we had all the benefits that ICTs are, are often seen as delivering? How do we make them more sustainable? How do we make the interventions that they offer more sustainable as well? And, and we can look at sustainability in, in a range of ways. There's obviously the environmental agenda, which is coming through the so-called sustainable development goals. But there's also actually the sustainability of the se sector, the sustainability of the economic models, and all those sorts of things. So I, I, we're yeah, hoping, and we're having some very fun discussions uh, um, amongst people from very different backgrounds, you know, trying to resolve some of these issues. So we're hoping it's not just going to be you know, the same old standard publication, uh, ICTs and SDGs, but, but to drill down a little bit. Uh, a second uh, key aspect, I think, is, is very much around ensuring that it has some practical recommendations. Again, how those are going to come through. But, but there's little point in the ITU producing a book unless there's some good, clear advice for governments in, OK, if you've got this issue, you know, these are the options for, that you can choose from. It was lovely. I, we've spoken before about these things. But uh, you know I hate the word best practice or the term best practice because there are just lots of good practices that people have adapt to their own local context. And, and that's going to be a theme coming through as well. It's not a best practice publication, but it's you know, these are the range of options that if you want to ensure that ICTs can contribute to the SDGs, but also more broadly to sustainability, you might like to take forward and explore. And, and I think you know, the ITU and, and the work of uh, the BDT, particularly, and its focus on development, is always here as a partner to work with governments, the private sector, and the civil society in actually putting that rhetoric into practice. So it's an exciting project to be part of. Now, putting this study into context, there are several studies and debates on how ICT are a key enabler to economic growth and innovation. But perhaps you could tell us uh, more, a little bit more about the main outcomes of this study and its added value to the existing discussions and, and especially its contribution to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. Well, I, we, we all know there are far too many Sustainable Development Goals and nobody remembers all of the 169 targets. So, so we're not trying in this publication to be universal. Uh, we're concentrating particularly on I, three or four main areas. Uh, economic growth is, is, is of course, clearly important. Uh, we're focusing on things like job creation, entrepreneurship, and innovation as well. Yes, there have been publications on those, uh, but, but we're also going to situate it more broadly within you know, other aspects of the SDGs. So how can those contribute to education, for example. Uh, I, it's, it's very sad that there actually wasn't, uh, from my perspective anyway, an SDG specifically on accessibility and affordability of, of ICTs. And when I was at the CTO, this is something that, that Commonwealth governments were very keen to see, uh, but, it, but it didn't happen. It's also very sad that ICTs are only formally mentioned in four of the 169 targets. Um, but, but as the work that the ITU has been involved in and other UNA 
agencies in the WISIS process. You know, there's a fantastic matrix which, of course, shows how ICTs can contribute to everything. Um, but, but our core focus is on you know, these, these critical themes around you know, job creation, innovation, economic growth, but also how they can influence the others. Uh, one of my particular interests and, and in the work that I'm contributing is to focus on inequality and it's nice that SDG 10 is, is of course about inclusion. And, and so the, the book will look at that aspect because if we don't ensure that the use of ICTs is inclusive, that is going to lead to a much more unstable world which is unsustainable. So uh, there, there are, there are uh, in, in terms of the, the content we're going to be writing uh, around those issues, and yes there have been other publications on them, but not, not quite approached in this way. I think uh, a, a second thing that this book's going to be novel at is, is, as I mentioned earlier, around the practical implications. Uh, okay, there's no point in writing unless we can uh, come up with, with something uh, forward-looking and, and, and things that will make a difference. And thirdly, it's, it's an interesting model in kind of co-creation of knowledge it's bringing a group of people together from very, very different perspectives, different parts of the world, mainly male, sadly, and we need to do more about uh, you know, getting uh, alternative voices around the table. But each of us has gone out to our own communities and, and is working with them, getting insights from them, getting feedback, and, and, and really discussing the shape of the, the book as a whole. And we're, we're just down from a discussion about exactly what the title should be. Um, but also then going through each chapter, there's several of us involved in each chapter, and, and everybody then c puts comments on, on other people's chapters. Uh, so we're having fun things around whether or not we actually need to define terminology. And we, we, we do have a, a get out clause that actually the ITU all too often is, is quite cautious about defining terminology and enables people to use terminology in its own ways. But there is a UN language, there is an ITU language. And, and so one of the, the interesting things that the editorial team is going to have to do is to ensure that uh, that ITU language features. Um, so having great debates about exactly what sustainability means and uh, what, what networks mean and, and, and portals and, and things like that. Now you're leading the chapter on critical elements of sustainability and development. Perhaps you could tell us some of these critical elements. Yeah, well we're using critical in, in, in two main ways. Uh, one is what are the most important, but the other is actually also being quite critical of some of the notions and arguments around sustainability. Um, I, you know, there are those who say that sustainable and development actually don't go hand in hand um, because any development implies change, whereas sustainable isn't change and, and, or it's continuing change. So uh, we, we're going to tackle those questions head on. Um, we're going to explore the notion of sustainability in a range of ways. Um, particularly around it, 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 you know, what is the impact of ICTs on the, the physical environment. I mean, a lot of the notions of sustainability that went into the SDGs came from the environmental debate. Uh, and, and that's going to be quite challenging. There have been a lot of studies which have focused on a particular area of the environment, showing how technology can be carbon neutral and companies are encouraged to be carbon neutral. But that is just a tiny fraction of the environmental impact that ICTs and technology in more general has. Uh, so we're, we're going to be challenging some, some issues around that. A second complaint one often has about ICT projects, especially those designed to support poor and marginalized communities, is that the projects dry up and stop after funding ceases. And, and many of these projects are funded by bilateral, multilateral donors or civil society organizations. And so the standard complaint is we've done this wonderful pilot project, uh, but it doesn't go to scale and it's not sustainable. So we're going to uh, tackle that head on as well. You know, what, are the, what needs to be in place for some of the great things that ICTs can do to be sustainable and systematized? And these are things like you know, ensuring a holistic approach, ensuring uh, that, that, that the full financial cost of such an initiative is, is planned through the system. Ensuring that projects are designed at scale from the beginning. If you, you, you can have a, a wonderful pilot project that companies will throw lots of money at to persuade the government to roll it out more widely, be that in the health sector or be it in education. And then when you actually realize, well, this has to go to 50 million children in school, 
um, yeah, the, the sums add up and it, it, you, you can't do it. So we're, we're going to be looking at that. We're, we're, we're going to be arguing particularly that uh, whether one calls it a multi-sector approach or a multi-stakeholder approach, uh, definitely not a public-private approach because public-private partnerships tend to ignore civil society and, uh, and other people as well. Uh, so yeah, that a multi-stakeholder approach is essential, but uh, th there's remarkably little good practice in multi-sector or multi-stakeholder approaches that, that people could draw on. Everybody talks about them, but they still um, don't deliver them very well. So we're, we're going to be addressing that. So uh, and, and, and I think a key theme that's going to come through the book as a whole is there's a cost to that. Sustainability doesn't just happen. If, if you want to focus on it, you're going to have to pay in some way. You know, that payment can be in, in cash, in, in finance, or it can be in actually doing things in very different ways that you're not used to, changing the organizational approach, another kind of cost. So um, all of that in 6,000 words. I've probably said more than 6,000 words in this interview. But uh, so, so it, it's a, a real challenge is compressing it into um, something that makes sense and, and is very readable. I mean, it's going to be a book that I hope will be fun to read as well. Well, we wish you the very best of luck with this, and thank you very much, Steve, for being with us in the studio today. It's always nice to be with you. Thanks. <laughs>